right now I'm running around here. It looks like high ground, the same map. Maybe you play this in the multiplayer beta. Um, at the moment, it looks no different than anything else that I've done. Um, if I press up on the D-pad, I immediately can turn into, uh, go into editing mode. And this is kind of where the fun begins. You can't see this, but right now I'm actually being, uh, I'm actually playing as a character that's like 343 Guilty Spark in Halo. I'm being represented in the game as a monitor, uh, one of the foreigner monitors. So I can fly around the map here, and uh, you know, at a very basic level, I can add and remove objects anywhere in the map. Um, like these, these barrels here, if I don't like them, I can just remove them, delete them. Maybe this thing is bothering me. Uh, I can decide where every weapon gets placed and which weapons are going to be placed. So I could move this over here if I felt like it would be maybe more balanced for my needs. Um, I also can decide uh, how often each weapon should respawn, how much ammo it should start with. Um, and this applies to not only weapons, but also vehicles. So, you know, maybe I always thought that this map would play a lot better with a wraith on it. I could do that. You know, you can never drive this wraith outside the gate, um, but maybe I don't care and I think that's fun. In addition to weapons and vehicles, uh, I can do other things to change the map properties. These blue circles represent uh, default player spawn locations. So every time you die in the game, you'll respawn at one of these locations. So uh, I could decide that you know everyone on one of the on the red team that dies should always respawn inside this room. Um, I could do that, and that obviously would have a pretty big impact on the way uh, this map would be played. I also can add and remove things like teleporters. And on some of the larger maps, being able to add these teleporters uh, has the ability to really change the way that they play and in some ways maybe make them more viable for, uh, for smaller size, uh, smaller people. Now, one of the things that I can't demonstrate about Forge but that makes it really, really cool besides being able to spend a lot of time by yourself building these maps is up to eight people at a time can run around inside these Forge environments. And while you're running around, uh, people can be uh, perhaps doing something as silly as trying to drop these exploding fusion coils on your head. Um, and the whole time you're doing this, the game is still keeping score um, for Slayer. So some of the examples that, that we do at the studio when we're playing around is um, a friend of mine is pinned down on the beach. I'll put this crate down and move it around and he'll hide behind it and use it for cover. And meanwhile, we can advance all the way up here to the base and uh, I can protect him from fire. One of the other things that we like to do, we call the flying carpet, is I'll drop a sniper rifle for my buddy, he'll pick it up, he'll get on top of this crate, and then I can levitate it and fly him around the map. And now I have this sort of moving platform of death that uh, gives him a pretty unfair advantage. But meanwhile, I mean, even when I'm in editing mode, I can still be killed. A rocket launcher shot will kill me, a couple rounds of a battle rifle would still kill me. So I'm still vulnerable. Uh, but you really have these sort of cat and mouse games, uh, rock, paper, scissors scenarios where, you know, we talked about earlier, let's say that you're playing a game and your opponent decides to, to give his teammates a, a scorpion tank. Okay, well, you know, I'm going to hurry up and I'm going to give my friends um, something to counter that scorpion tank, so I'll probably give my team a couple rocket launchers. But then this guy decides, okay, I'm not going to use the tank. Instead, I need a bubble shield so I can be blocked from, from dying from rocket launchers. So you sort of have this escalation where you can react and, and act accordingly. Um, I should note that there is a, a budget for each map. Um, it's down here in the lower corner. Right now it's being represented by dollars. Um, there's no real money at stake. It's just used as an easy way of communicating what's going on. But each map has a maximum amount of stuff you can put on it without making your Xbox explode. So you, you can't drop 10 Scorpion tanks in this map, for example. Mm -hmm. Everything you uh, add to the map will take away from your budget. Um, everything you delete from the map will add back to your budget. So there is a balance that you'll have to maintain. And obviously, we have to do that to make sure that we keep performance and that we don't let people uh, break the game, if you will. Um, and once you're done goofing around, having fun, rebuilding your maps, uh, you can save these maps and upload them to Xbox Live, and now all of your friends can, can actually play, play them and experience your version of High Ground, for example. And at Bungie, we're going to be looking out for people that make great maps and that do cool stuff like this, and we'll be able to add them into matchmaking and make them part of the sort of 
more global official uh, Halo 3 online experience. So that's just a really quick view of Forge. Um, I think on one hand it's going to be really great for really hardcore players that maybe feel that maps over time become unbalanced because of certain weapons. Well, that's no longer, no longer a problem because you can wipe the slate clean and repopulate the map any way that you see fit. Um, and also, I can't state enough how fun it is just to goof around inside there and throw tanks on each other and blow stuff up. It's, it, it never seems to get old.